I'm going to finish off my Savage World 5.5 inch figure collection coming up right now. Okay, I'm a huge fan. Masters of the Universe was my favorite toy as a child. Skeletor, who was the very first 5.5 inch figure that I saw back in the 80s. I'm not sure when it was. I was in Canada and in a small fishing community in Canada. So I really don't know what year it was. I just remember the Christmas after I saw him, or the Christmas of the year that I discovered Skeletor, I got so many figures. And some of them were Many Faces and Ram Man, but I don't know if we got them later or we got them sooner. It was the coolest looking figure I have ever seen with all the accessories, his simplicity, the colors. And then when I got the other ones, they were just as awesome. Zodek is my favorite Master of the Universe action figure, just because he is the epitome of everything that is Masters of the Universe, which is space and barbarian and monster. So he's got a little bit of everything in him. That has a lot to do with him. And just the fact that he was just a more mysterious figure. So I really like that. Funko is doing a really good job. Much better than Super 7. All of the things that I'm hearing about the legs breaking and everything. It's kind of scary. I have not gotten any of the Super 7 5.5 scale figures yet. But I do have them ordered. I didn't know if I was going to. I kind of have a... No, it's not even a love-hate relationship with the classics line. It's just been such a horrible journey. They cost so much money, especially to get internationally, especially in Canada. Even in Europe, they have European distribution, which makes it sometimes cheaper for them to get them, even more than it is for Canada. Recently, the shipping has changed at Super 7, and for $25, I can get things shipped here. I've also discovered an amazing store where I can pick up Funko figures, and I think Funko is kind of killing it. I find that the weapons seem kind of brittle. I don't know, there's something weird about the plastic that the figures are made with, but they seem quite sturdy. I love the ball-jointed legs. Those aren't going to break. That's awesome. Let me tell you what the name of the store in Canada. Pop in a box, Canada. Apparently there's no duties. I've pre-ordered all of the new Savage World Thundercats and the Monster Movie series. They look so good. In some ways, I kind of like them more than even Masters of the Universe. There's lots of detail on them, but it's not overly painted. I'm a big simplicity kind of guy. Masters of the Universe is just the epitome of what I love in an action figure. It's not because I grew up with it. Adventure People were my first favorite figures. I still love them to this day. I think they're the holy grail of action figures. But Masters of the Universe is just something special. Anyway, I have all of the chases, which I did not get from Pop in a Box. I got them off of eBay from a Canadian reseller and I was so surprised to be able to find them as a set. I'm so happy to have the whole series. I guess some smaller comic book shop had some extra chase variants. These were about $20 each actually in the end. I haven't shopped on eBay forever. I never think that you can find anything from Canada because shipping is so horrible from the States, but in Canada it's okay. And I found my two Zorns when visiting the States at Target and they were on clearance for six bucks. I don't know how much I was going to pay for all of these. I wanted to pay like $30 each. I do have an extra one of these that I had bought before for probably $20, $25, which is the price that you're looking at in Canada. On Amazon, you could find these ones for $9.99. That's where I ordered those from. But then after shipping and exchange, it's probably around $25 each. So I was very happy to find Pop in a Box, which they were $15 Canadian after my discount. Well, the ones that I pre-ordered. One of the things that I like and don't like about uh, the Funko ones is that I don't like the card art on any of this stuff. It's not like some kind of spectacular design. I wouldn't even say rudimentary. I would like rudimentary. I don't like the fonts or anything. It's kind of a great thing because I don't mind cracking these open, which I think Super 7's cards probably are looking really good. Those ones I might have more difficulty about opening, 
but maybe not because if I open them, they're going to break. With Super 7, I've been so supportive of them and like I was being tolerant and saying, give them time. And yet I have not bought anything from them at all. The reaction figures that I have gotten since they separated from Funko were from smaller comic book shops and stuff like that. I do like the reaction figures, I have to say, but I couldn't order anything from them online. It was just way too expensive. But apparently they fixed that a little bit. The pictures of the filmation figures from what I've seen look really good. I am not the same kind of Masters of the Universe collector that most people are. The community, for the most part, seems to love the cartoon. I kind of hated the cartoon. It just talked down to kids too much. I grew up with Boris posters on my wall. Like I said, when I saw Skeletor, he was just so cool. Simple, amazing sculpt, not too much paint. The focus was on the design and the colors. The comic books inside of those first eight were like so cool. The 70s kind of influence was still there, very creepy, and the first DC Comics I really liked. And then I found laser discs at the rental store. I brought them home and I put on He-Man and I was a little disappointed to say the least, but I grew to like it. And by the time they reached She-Ra, they managed to start making good stories and everything. Anyway, PowerCon just got finished. Everyone is 5.5-ing. Everyone's excited. Mattel wants to make their figures. It seems like Super 7 is going to focus on making new figures. I have a feeling that Mattel is going to be focusing on bringing back the old ones, which these ones actually are my reproductions. I am going to do a collection video of all my classic Masters of the Universe figures sometime. I didn't know that I was going to talk so much in this video about Masters of the Universe and everything. It was the only toy I collected as a kid. Like, I mean, in the beginning, I had some Star Wars toys. I had some... Did I have any G.I. Joe? My brother had some G.I. Joes. I had um, bigger like 12 inch I actually had to use a Ken because G.I. Joe wasn't able to be found by then so I did dress up a Ken in the G.I. Joe fashions that I would find and I had like a truck Battlestars Galactica but when I discovered Skeletor everything else went on the wayside and I focused I mean I played with Lego of course but I, the action figures I focused on were Masters of the Universe, and I just used all of my money and bought every figure, and every Christmas was only Masters of the Universe. That's all I wanted. And do you want to know something else? No one else collected Masters of the Universe. They talk about this property as being pretty popular. I don't know. Where I grew up, there was a naval base, so a lot of kids had G.I. Joe, and of course there was like a Star Wars following, and I guess this was before Thundercats or or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or any of that. But I didn't know. Nobody, no one else I knew was buying Masters of the Universe. But when I would go into the city, there was a pretty good selection and they were selling. But in my community, in my small little place that I grew up, I had no one to play Masters of the Universe with. I didn't get every figure but I got as many as I possibly could afford with my paper route. So I'm gonna open up these because I love them. And I'm going to open up my Zorns, and I'm going to have the whole Savage World collection. Let me talk about, as I open these, what I don't like about them, which is kind of a bad thing to say because these guys are doing the best job. I think Mattel did an excellent job with the uh, reproductions that they made back in the early 2000s. Or was it the late 1900s? Can you say the 1900s? I think I said everything about the whole state of affairs of what's going on with 5.5. There seems to be a big interest in it, and that is so exciting to me. I'm not used to not being careful about opening cards. Something I do wish they would do, I really wish they would make resealable cards. It's super smart business sense not to make a resealable card, because then people will buy two. I mean, a lot of people have seen these figures before, this is of the Zorn card, the two figures that you can get. I don't know if I like the series. I think I started to watch it on Netflix, and I didn't continue watching it, and I don't remember what happened, so I guess I didn't enjoy it too much. But I sure like the way that the figures look. That's kind of reminiscent of Masters of the Universe now, isn't it? Now, I loved the Mike Young series. Go figure. 
I'm not a big cartooner. I don't really like cartoons. I mean, every once in a while there's one that I like. There's some smart cartoons out there. I remember the Mike Young show I haven't watched in a while. I do own all the DVDs for all of the Masters of the Universe series, so I should revisit it again, but I remember it giving me chills and just thinking that the story was so good, and I hated the figures. I bought them all. I spent hours and days chasing all of the figures down, and I got them all, and I got all the chases, probably all the vehicles, everything that came to Canada that I possibly could get, I got, and I don't know why I did, because I did not like them. Too modernized for me, too stylistic, just not my taste. And then there's the whole classics. Let's take a look at what this card looks like. Uh, they wrapped these so well and protected them in tissue paper and everything in bubble wrap. And the cards are very minty minty. Feel kind of guilty about opening these up. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know if there's going to be any chase for the monster series. And I don't know when Conan's coming out. Let me show you how I normally open up a Masters of the Universe figure. I'll cut around the bubble so I can save the card. I may as well do this, even though I have no reason to save this card. I guess that art looks pretty good back there. It's got that metallic chase sticker on it. Love translucent. So they did really well with these chases because they all have the translucent business going on. Oh yeah, I started to talk about how I was a big condoner of Super 7 and I like defended them on the boards and stuff. But I got to a point where I'm like, enough is enough. How many more mistakes can you make? I just think they bit off more than they could chew. A little company trying to make these figures without any help from, you know, Funko helped them before. And I wish Mattel hadn't have given them all the go-ahead. I wonder if Mattel is kicking themselves right now. Like, they have molds for styles of Masters of the Universe that were never used. Each figure has, like, a special things. Like, there's Skeletor arms, and there's... He-Man arms, many faces, legs, and Beast Man has the hairy chest, which they would just reuse and mix and match. That's why I like Zodak again. Skeletor arms, He-Man's furry underwear, the hairy chest, and he's got the space hat. He's just a mix of everything. But there's another body mold out there, a whole other style. And Mattel apparently gave it to Super 7 to create these figures that were never ever made before. We heard about it, we haven't seen them yet. Did they give Super 7 total exclusive rights to use this? Can they not even use it themselves? They talk about them not making the same things. I mean, they're not making the same things. Super 7 does not ever reproduce anything. They're big on never reduplicating or making a reproduction just because they're from a collector's standpoint. But I'm a huge fan of reproductions. Just because, like this He-Man, for instance, even though all of my figures are in excellent condition because I was like this anal retentive kid, so my original ones are in excellent condition, but it's so good to be able to have the opportunity to get something that can be in perfect condition. Now, here's the thing. As much as I don't like the cartoon, I really like how the Super 7 figures turned out because it's still the aesthetic that I like. I like, see this castle? That's the kind of the same kind of thing. It's simple and the colors are bright and vibrant and the details are molded into the different colors of plastic, but there's less paint. It's just more of a cartoon feel, just a simple... Toy. The Filmation ones turned out excellent, and they just look really good. I don't know how good the paint jobs are going to be or anything. What I'm trying to say is I really like how they look. I don't like that the legs are falling off of all of them. Okay, let's, uh, let's get in here. It looks like they did not give him, unless I just lost them, his hand energy bursts. Instead, they covered him with these stringy energy bursts, which is kind of awesome. They just wrap this stuff all around. And the translucent boots. His hat got bent in the box, or maybe that's how it's supposed to be. 
How does my other one look? It's not as bent. Here is the difference, if you want to see. The accessories don't stay on very well. The plastic is a more brittle plastic on these. I like the toy to have more of a rubbery feel. It just always feels more secure. It might be harder for them to paint it. But yeah, that's the difference. This guy was probably the one that I wanted most. Again, a very brittle plastic. I would definitely prefer like the power sword feel. You know how that was super rubbery? It's really hard to get the weapons in the hand. I don't want to like chip the paint off. There's something weird going on with his finger. Let me check my other one. I'm not going to put their weapons in their hand. These are the swords. They're a beautiful design. And these are these two together. So there's a lot of detail here. And that's something that I don't like too much. I'm not a big McFarlane fan. So I'm not a big fan of what the horsemen have done with Masters of the Universe. Because it's a little more detail. I like toys. I like toys to look like toys. I'm a toy fan. But the way that these are done is just enough detail. Like, I can appreciate detail if the paint is all perfect. The stuff is usually not removable on any of these things, but they're painted really well. And the sculpts are really nice. And it is simple and cartoony and kind of funny and hunky and chunky. And I really like it. This is the figure I wanted the most because of the different head sculpt. It's a completely unique sculpt. So come on, look at that awesome skull head. Oh, I haven't talked about the things I don't like. In pictures, these tend to look not as good as they actually are because they really tried to mimic the He-Man stance, but the legs are thicker on all of these, which is another reason why I like them more, because they're more hunky and chunky than even the original He-Man. Here's a good example to show you. I think Zorn would probably be the best. See how bent his legs are? So sometimes in some pictures and in some ways that it looks, to me on the screen right now when I'm looking at the figures, they look pretty good though. They look better. So I like that. I like that they're thicker and sturdier looking. When I look at these next to each other, I think this looks like the better figure. Everything's more brittle. The body parts come off. That's something that I don't even think I realized. Like I said, I was very, very careful with my toys as a kid. I guess I knew that some kids put on different arms, but I wasn't ripping the arms off of my figures. These things all come off real easy. Oh yeah, the head comes off easy. Oh, the legs come off really easy. These fell off, but I much rather these be a ball joint that fall off really easy than have the Super 7 ones that break. That ain't cool. All of these Savage World figures, you're going to be able to mix and match. So yes, the legs have a little too much bend in them, so it kind of sometimes makes them look funny if you stare a little bit too much. And in some pictures, their legs look totally like too tiny, but it is just because they're bent. And then there's the arms. I don't know why they put them out so far. They go out much further than they should. I guess it was based on He-Man. See how the hands are jetting out, but He-Man's arms still kind of come in a little bit. If they were at their side just the slightest bit more, and the legs were just the slightest bit straighter, which they did not fix in any of the new releases. But I, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Obviously I'm okay with it. I'm buying every one and I'm so excited. I'm just talking about little details that I think would make them better. And then there's the translucent figure. And something that I always love. In fact, the first toy that wasn't Masters of the Universe that I bought that I can remember was a translucent masher. Who's the ice guy in Marvel? There was a masher. He was translucent. It looked very much like this, actually. Mashers I'm a huge fan of, too, because they are kind of in this scale. And I kind of wish that Mattel would have made... Kind of like, a, well, they did it with WWE. Create a superstar. That was kind of the thing. I wish they would have done it with Masters of the Universe. These Funko figures kind of did it, considering you can rip their legs off. The heads do come off. Different peg from Zorn. Zorn uses the same pegs as the arm joints. So let me, let me mash one of these up. They swivel at the waist, but there's not a punching action. He barely twists at the waist because of his shirt. 
The arms are the same. The head is not the same. You can't stick the head on, but you might be able to play around a little bit. I wonder if the waist could pop off. I don't know. I don't want to mess around with these too much. I don't want to break them. They are a bit brittle. Do you want to see how this is made? Okay, I promise never to take these apart again. And he comes with the same two translucent weapons that he came with in his normal figure. So a before and after. And then there's this Zorn with his tie and white shirt on. <laughs> and he comes with a goblet. I don't know what episode that is from. I'd like that you can put his sword in his back. So that's pretty sweet. I think that they've made them better since Zorn because, like I said, Zorn does seem to fall apart a little more. Much easier to take off his arms and stuff. It might have to do with the type of plastic they used. This is more brittle, but the appendages are the kind of plastic that I love, the head too. So far we've only seen different kinds of He-Mans from Mattel. So He-Man and different paint decos, basically. And there's 12 inch ones, some giant ones. We've got them before. I guess there's plans to make them too. And there's dolls. That's something else that I didn't think I was gonna talk about. This is a Funko episode, but I'll just say it quickly. Just like I love these five points of articulation, awesome for me. I don't like the dolls with the double joints because it doesn't look as good. I like when the focus is on the design of the figures and that's kind of the difference between these and like G.I. Joe because you take out the articulation the same as Star Wars and Adventure People which I said is the holy grail of all toys. I really like how the design isn't compromised by the joints. And the playability is still awesome. See, I guess with the bent leg makes it kind of good because he's just crouched down, but it also works for sitting quite easily too. It's the perfect action figure. Just a nice, hunky, sturdy enough, big enough. So that was more of a talk on 5.5s than me showing off the exclusives in my whole collection. But you did get to see my whole Funko Savage World collection so far because we've got some awesome stuff coming out. Are you excited to see first the monsters and then Thundercats? Can you believe Thundercats? Mattel is making Thundercats too, apparently, making them in that classics version. I don't know. I kind of liked it. I didn't like it. I kind of like the filmation versions because they are a little more simple. I like my toys to look like toys, basically. There's lots of detailed stuff out there that you can get if you want that. I just want toys. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'd love to hear what your take is on this. If you're interested in seeing what this castle is, you're going to have to check out some of my videos and hope to see you again soon. <sighs> this video is going to be horrible to edit. It's going to be really long, too. I wonder if anybody's going to sit through this. I have a lot of opinions on the 5.5 scale, and I have a lot of opinions of how people are handling the brands. I'm super happy that Mattel is kind of taking an interest now. Because I know that their quality... Like, I mean, the face stamps might not be in the right place, but I know that the quality of the plastic is going to be exceptional. The quality of the plastic on everything I've seen so far from the smaller companies is kind of scary. Like, this is some brittle stuff. So I don't know how sturdy these things are. Not that I'm going to play with them or anything. He-Man now is smaller than... Oh. He-Man's no longer the buffest guy in the universe. Even Zorn is bigger than he is now.